Dear viewers, welcome to yet another episode of Expert Speak. Financial year 22-23 is over. Now it's time to file tax return for FY 22-23. NRA community has got lots of doubts in their mind. Should I file my tax returns or not? What are the thresholds? What is my advantage? What is my risk? Why I'm getting the income tax notices? All these questions could be there in your mind. I am asking all these questions to my expert of the week, Ambar Rai Gurg, in this episode. This is NRA Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan, but your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. New hype. Just the right advice. Dear viewers, to answer the questions that could be there in your mind, I have invited an eminent faculty, Chartered Accountant, Amber Raigar, for this particular show. Mr. Amber Raigar is a seasoned Chartered Accountant with an experience close to two decades. He is a second generation Chartered Accountant in his family. Their Chartered Accountant firm, Rai Kimat and Associates, is popular in Gurgaon. Rai Kimat and Associates have got branches not only in Gurgaon, but they are also present in Pune. They specialize in direct and indirect taxes, compliance, corporate governance, audit, and accounting. They have collaborated with hundreds of corporates in India. Many of them are Fortune 500 companies. They have started a website by name File My Returns, which is used by more than 18,000 people to file their tax return every year. Who can be better to answer your queries than Mr. Amber Rai Garg? Welcome to the show, uh, Mr. Amber Rai Garg. Thank you, Dr. Chandakan Bhatt, for giving me this opportunity to come on your NRA Money Clinic and to serve to your NRA clients. Thank you so much. Mr. Amber Raigar, NRA community has lots of doubts in their mind. Should I file my tax returns or not? Am I liable to file tax return? I live in some corner of the world. When should I file my tax return? Can you tell me, for the benefit of my viewers, which NRA should file tax return? So basically, if I say honestly that whether the NRA should file the return in income tax return in India, I will say yes, whether there is an income or not. One reason for that is the income tax department, neither the government of India knows that he's an NRI because when he went abroad, he has not declared that he's an NRI to anybody in India. Secondly, in case he has an income in India, he should file the return in India to prove that the money which he has invested in India is a legal money. It's not a black money because the government cannot come to know what was the source of income if he doesn't file the return. Third reason is that any income which has been arisen in India, there's a TDS been withheld by the department, by the person under, uh, suppose if you have invested the money in NRO saving account or you have invested in money in mutual fund and through which you are getting dividends and all that, there's a withholding tax at the rate of 30%, which is getting deducted. That is a loss for you straight away if, in, if your income is below taxable income. So you can claim that that TDS which has been deducted. So my advice to all the NRIs who are abroad should file the return in time that is till 31st of July 2023. Amber, in reality, there are situations which will become slightly confusing. See, for example, an NRI does not have an income which is in excess of threshold levels, 2.5 lakh, 3 lakh, whatever it is from for that particular year. Or he feels that this is a small amount of TDS. I don't want to get into this hassles of filing the tax return. I will let it go. What consequences will follow in such a circumstance? Or what is the advantage an NRA gets by filing a tax return? Of course, he has an obligation to file tax return if there is a due taxes which have to be paid. If he doesn't have to pay any taxes, what advantages he gets by filing a nil tax return? Or if he lets it go, the TDS what has been done, a small TDS, I don't care about it, I will not file the tax return. What might happen or what advantages will follow? If I talk about the advantages, first advantage is that in future, he will not get the notices for the investment which he has made in India. Again, coming back to the first point which I said, that the department doesn't know that you are NRI. Secondly, what was the source from which you have bought this property or you have made investment in India? What was the source for that? Because if you are not declared the status of the department, they will never come to know about it key that you are NRI. Secondly, what was the source with, from which this money was earned and you have made the investment in India is a legal money. 
Thirdly, right now these days department is not concerned about this part whether your income is below taxable income or it is above taxable income. They are more concerned is what was the source of money through which you have made the money investment. Second, even if there is an income which is getting arisen from the investment which you have made in India, their concern is that that income which is arisen is below taxable income. You are saying the pattern doesn't know that because you have not filed the return. How will they come to know whether it was below taxable income or below above taxable income? There are so many income on which the TDS is not interpreted. Just to give an example, there is an income coming from rental. Suppose you have, to, you have given your property on rent to somebody who is the individual who is residing in India. You are having a rental income of 20,000, 30,000 rupees. And there is an income coming from interest which is lying in LR account on which the TDS is deducted. I agree the TDS interest income is only 40,000. But what about the rental income which is coming of 20,000, 30,000 rupees? The department doesn't know that. But you forget to know that that's this type of income gets reported automatically from the banker, your banker, from where your tenant is depositing the rent in your bank account. They are reporting to the department, this is the income which are coming. They have access to all your bank account statements and all that thing in India. So, so my advice is that it is better. There is no drawback in filing the income tax return rather than if you don't file the return, the disadvantages are lot many. One, when you get when the maturity is there, then also when you are making an investment, then also there is a loss because the department will serve a notice to you. At that time, you miss the uh, addressing that question. There is a demand which gets arisen. So uh, to avoid these type of hassles and harassments, for my advice is that it is better to file the return in time. Don't avoid it. Don't run away. And there is no problem in filing the return. It takes just a matter of 20-30 minutes of your precious time rather than spending later on days, mental pressure and all that to address these queries and the questions serve the notices by the department in section 148, 142, like, like that. So it's better to file the return in time, that is 31st July 2023 for the financial ending 31st March 2023. Amber, uh, one impression that is there in the minds of NRI community is NRE accounts are tax free. Uh, interest earned on NREFD is tax free or on the SB accounts interest earned is tax free. I am not liable for any transactions that have happened in the NRE account. Large transactions will happen. People will get money from friends there. People will ask their companies to deposit money into their NRE account. The question is, are the transactions which happen in the NRE account or on the radar of income tax department. Can income tax question the dealings in the NRE account? Or just because it's an external account, the department says, I don't worry, let anything happen there. Honestly speaking, if I say, first I would like to say that any money which has been given by a resident or a company, resident company in India to a NRI, it has to be deposited into NR account. It cannot be deposited into NRE account. The first, the money will come into NR account, then it will go to NRE account. The reason being is because the income is being given through India to a NRI who is settled abroad, agreed. But if you are making a transaction which is related to shares, whether it is related to property, the money cannot go directly into your NR account. It has to go first into NR account and from there you, are, you, have, you can take your money to NRE account or to a foreign account. So if I say this is one thing. Second, if I say if you, if you are making a transaction directly into NRE account, yes, you are liable to give an answer to the income tax department. What is the source where the money is coming into your NRE account? Because right now the department is not only concerned whether it is not there out of their purview to say that this is NRE account and they are not to do with anything because this is a foreign account for them. No, boss, I will suggest you be very careful on that front that any money which is coming to your NRE account that is being reported by the bankers to the income tax department that these are the transactions which has happened. And in case any suspicious thing which comes in there in your statement and any of high value transactions come in suspicious to the income tax department, they will serve a notice to you in regards to the explanation needed from where this money has come from. And if you say that it is a simply saying that it's an NRE account is no excuse to them. If you are not able to give a proper reply to it, then this addition will be made and this, this money will be treated as a black money for you. Black money in, in, the, in the eyes of the income tax department. And in that case, whatever the money you have got, that 
complete set of money along with the interest and the penalties will be taken away from your account. So do not avoid, do not do these silly mistakes by taking the money directly to your NRE account. Think before taking any single penny into your NRE account because whatever the money gets coming into your NRE account will be reported by the income tax to the income tax department by the bankers and that explanation has to be given by you guys to the income tax department what is the source of that. Further, there are so many cases in which I have found out. There was one particular case which I uh, last week only attended in which a person was served a notice from the income tax department in regards to the investment made in the share market and there was a dividend and the person was aware of this fact there was a TDS being deducted on that but he was simply and the notice been served to him he what was the source from which we have bought the shares of one year and secondly there was a dividend approximately close to around 2 lakh rupees and which the TDS of 30 was deducted 60,000 rupees so he said my threshold income was below 30, uh, 2.5 lakh rupees I don't need have to file the income tax department he simply replied it to the income tax department stating that and the next very day, the income tax department replied it back stating that, boss, no, this is not acceptable. The reply which is given by you is not acceptable to us. We are concerned about one, what was the source of money that is one year which we have invested in the share market has come from. Second, the point is that 2 lakh rupees dividend which you have earned, is there any other income which has been earned by you? We don't know. So why did you file the return? So there is no exemption for all those NRIs or anybody who is having any income and there is a TDS has been deducted, they have to file the return in time in order to avoid penalties and all that. And in this case, what happened further was that 1 crore P which the money he has invested was from through NRE account and he has purchased the shares and everything. But the DMAT account which he was holding was not a NRE DMAT account, it was a normal resident DMAT account. The mistake which he made, made was that he made the investment through NRE account but the DMAT account which he used was a resident DMAT account. So automatically the money which has come from NRE or DMAT account was considered as an investment made in India and all the income which was earned through that DMAT account whether it was through sale or through dividend on that the person was liable to pay tax in India only. So it's better whatever the accounts you are holding please update your status to NRI whether it is bank account whether you have made investment in shares whether you have made investment in mutual funds whether you are holding an insurance policies, whether you are holding a DMAT account, please upgrade your status to NRE and NRO account and verificate that properly so that these type of notices are not being served to you and you avoid any type of penalties for not attending these notices. Dear viewers, we as NRIs, we should also be very, very responsible. If we are living in countries like USA, Canada, Ireland, UK, uh, Singapore, Australia, Japan, we will be very careful while filing the tax return. We will not do one mistake which might violate the law. Let's follow the same thing when it comes to our mother country, India. So let's not say that tomorrow some department guys harassed us or we got a notice. Let's try to do our part in a right way. And when it comes to question of answering to the authorities at a later time, it becomes easier for you. Do not neglect. Better you comply. Better be proactive to save the trouble in the future. Amber, I heard you. I know that the tax filing due date is 31st of July 2023. For any reasons, if a person failed to file the tax return within the due date, are there extended deadlines? And if somebody really forgets it, neglects it, uh, don't care, what consequences might follow? Honestly speaking, the deadline is 31st of July 2023. The benefits of filing the, the return in time is one, that you don't have to pay late filing penalty, which will start after 31st July 2023. That is from 31st July till 31st of December. If you file the return after the due date, you have to pay a penalty of 5,000 rupees for not filing the return in time. And beyond 31st of December till 31st of March 2024, if you file the return, the penalty rises from 5,000 to 10,000 rupees. So one the drawback of not filing the return in time, in time is that you have to pay the penalty. Second major drawback of not filing the return in time is that in case there is a carry forward losses or not forward losses, that is have arisen due to the sale of mutual funds or shares or property which you can offset in future with the gains when you sell shares, mutual funds or property. You will not be able to carry forward that losses if you file the return after 31st of July 2023. So that is a drawback number two of not filing the return in time. 
Third, in case if you file the return in time, so in so many countries, like we have a double taxation treaty signed with these countries like US, Canada and all that. So if you file the return in time, so whatever the tax you have paid in India on the income which has been arisen in, in India, so you can get the input when you show this income in your income tax return filing abroad. So you get the input of all the tax which you have paid in India if you file the return in time, even if you file it after the due date. So the penalty which you pay, that is of 5,000 rupees and all the interest which you pay, that input you will not get it while filing the income tax return abroad. So it's better to file the return in time that is 31st July 2023 so that you can get the input and everything in time. That is the reason. Second, there is no loss in terms of carry forward losses which have been arisen due to the last financial year due to sale of mutual funds or say mutual funds or shares or anything. So it's better to file the return in time. That is what my humble request to every NRI who is sitting abroad, they should file the return in time in order to avoid notices, in order to get input in time, all the carry forward losses, everything they will get in time if they file it by 31st of July 2023. Dear viewers, please take cues from the advice tendered by Amr Raikar. Do file your tax return. Take the help of chartered accountant, commercial accountants or any person who is prepared to help you out in this particular filing of tax return. You have no other help and you want help from us. Our services are also geared up to help you file your tax return. If you have an intention to seek help, you can reach out to us through the WhatsApp number which is shown here on the screen or just go to the description box, click on the link there. It will take you to the WhatsApp uh, directly and send us a message and we will help you file tax returns in India. Mr. Amar Raigar, thank you very much for your time and our community of NRIs will take cues from what you said and will file tax returns as required by law. Thank you very much for your time. I remain in gratitude to you. Thank you, Dr. Chandrakhan Bhatt. Dear viewers, NRI Money Clinic gives you two videos every week. Tuesday, the expert on the subject matter will come and address you. Friday, I'll be talking my views on your life, your money. These are value-filled videos. You should consider subscribing to this channel if you are not yet subscribed for the channel. Do hit that subscribe button now and press the bell icon. Don't forget to share these videos with your near and dear ones. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRI Money Clinic. I shall be back with you next Tuesday with yet another expert, with yet another useful topic. Till then, stay safe. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.